Hello, it's Dave here from Mega Points Controllers. Well, 2021's proving to be a busy year, so I thought I'd bring you along on our journey and show you what we've been up to. I'm just about to finish the second batch of panels for this year in the second week. We uh, painted this one yesterday. It's a nice little A4. The panels come with MDF backing, laser cut, and a hand-painted fascia. Rather nice. This one we've added a little um, totem graphic to it. It's in two colours, again A4. And on this panel, this is an A3. It's just come off the laser and I'm about to, uh, about to paint it. So I thought you might like to come and have a look. We end up, or we begin with, the laser cut base. And this is where all the buttons and lights will go. And then the panel itself, which is, still has the covering film on it. So this guy's going to be all black and we'll, um, we'll paint it by hand and you can, uh, you can see what we do. So if I get this painted today, dry tonight and in the post tomorrow, I think we'll have three very happy customers. Uh, so it's all black, this panel. All we need is a bit of paint. I think before I start, I'll just check the proof. I know sometimes people think that these are, um, they're printed or they treat it like a printed process, but we don't have the flexibility of printing. We have to paint by hand and we have to leave a little gap as well. So here's, here's what we're going to paint. <coughs> so let's make a start. Obviously mistakes at this point are fatal. We have to start again. Okay. I'll probably do this in um, a couple of sittings. So I've come into my man cave where I can find the uh, peace and quiet to get on with it. I don't know if you've noticed, but um, we've added an additional outside building now to our premises and we uh, actually do all the order processing from this room behind me on the in the bins are all of the finished products and um, we ship from here I tend not to manufacture anything in this room it's purely for shipping but I like the open light from the window when I'm painting I'm just painting the furthest away from me first. Sometimes when you get panels with lots of colours it's, um, it's quite difficult, you've got to be very careful. But in my opinion, the, uh, I think the black ink covers the best, it gives you a really high contrast and it looks sharp. The worst colour I've ever painted was yellow, I refuse to do it now. It's just horrific, and it looks terrible. I think you have to put a lot, a lot of work into it to make it look decent. So we now limit our colour selection to four. We've black, green, red, and blue, and we selected those because they seem to give the best, the best covering. I have done other colours by arrangement, but. Um, it's not always easy. Some people are a little unrealistic in what they want. I sometimes see logos full of crazy graphics and fancy colours and I think, yeah, that's lovely. Uh, you have to get someone to print it because we can't hand paint that. Because between colours we need a, we need a little gap. We need I like to I like a millimeter as a minimum. Though sometimes when I'm doing semaphores and painting the red on the arms it gets a bit tight and every time I do it I think why have I done this to myself and the answer I often get back is because you love it Dave This 
this is almost a painting by numbers set except the implication of cocking it up is horrible. This panel took four and a half hours on the laser to make and I would hate to throw it away and spend another four and a half hours and that's after the job's prepared that's actual go time running the job preparation as well and in, it's been quite cold here we've had a little bit of snow on the ground so the laser's been all over the place in its calibration I've had to adjust the mirrors right back to the laser itself so I've had to go right into the laser at the back and uh, calibrate mirrors that you wouldn't normally touch and I guess that's just temperature underneath the laser I have uh, an electric heater that's linked to a thermostat so if the air temperature drops below three degrees it will come on and keep the laser tube warm because if it freezes because of the coolant water then it's 1500 pounds for another tube I suppose as this is a, a blog I get to ramble on and moan about stuff last year my um, Purex filtration system failed on the laser I'm the only person I know that actually filters the air that comes out of the laser and cleans it the filters themselves are quite expensive but the motor failed and of course it was out of warranty so I had to contact Purex and they seem to have this weird arrangement let's call it a closed market where they will send you back to where you bought it from and nobody else will um, is allowed to talk to you I think which is a bit a bit rubbish but um, a new motor and a set of filters cost me are you ready 1470 pounds nearly 1500 pounds the motor was eight or nine hundred ridiculous and when I took the old one out and replaced it yeah it's a motor with a circuit board whoop de doo but it didn't look much more than what you could buy online for a hundred or two pounds other than its proprietary fittings and circuit board for the filtration unit it um, it measures the air pressure either side of the filters and will adjust the flow or adjust the motor to adjust the flow so it's as clever as you want it to be at a price you can't afford it <laughs> I love this it's my space I can only paint panels when I'm in the mood though so sometimes there could be a batch of panels waiting to be painted either I'm rushed off my feet not in the mood something else is annoying me or higher priority and uh, these will sit here until they're done which is all part of why we quote six week turnaround time from the minute you pay your panel pay for your panel and drop into the queue to us dispatching it to you finished and in the middle of that of course we've um, we've got to draw up your artwork and send a copy back to you for you to approve we're not perfect I make mistakes all the time and this is your opportunity to look at it and say yep that's the panel I asked for please proceed or Dave what about this and remember I asked you to do that and it's you know if it's not all on the same sheet of paper I'm trying to draw the same drawing then things fall off of course it's I've learned it's all my fault always and that's good oh, I'm really enjoying this I'm dying to flip it over and have a look but, uh, I've done enough to know I can wait um, it will look absolutely brilliant once we take the foil off the other side which I'll do when it's finished the snow's cleared up now. I've got a lovely view of fields here. I sometimes go out there and fly my drone. 
even with the new UK laws, I can still fly. I'm very lucky. There was talk, there's talk of this, I think it's the A2 test. Costs 100 pounds and then I can fly it again a little bit more normal for till the end of 2022. I might do that. But I think what they've done is they've made a case for me getting a smaller drone, sub 250 grams. The thing is all the drones to comply now with the new rules have to be certified. They have to have a stamp on them and I don't think there's any on the market. So nobody's going to be selling drones until they've been uh, stamped. I wonder if eBay's going to do a roaring trade in stamps for drones. That'll be fun. I suppose the manufacturers will just tweak the model, give it a slightly different something, and that's the reason you've got to spend more money. I've painted that. I didn't paint those. Genius. Okay, let's have a quick look. Looking good. Oh, loving it. I tend to paint everything with a with the butt butting up to the left hand side this way and then I'll turn it round and I'll do the opposite side to close the track. Um, I find I can do it faster than constantly spinning the panel round. Though if anything I'd say my technique is let's get on with it. usually have the radio blaring away or some music on from Spotify but uh, I get a copyright strike if uh, if I did that on YouTube so I wonder what's new for 2021 for us in the world of model railways there's always a new whatever in a new livery a new loco or coach or whatever but I don't know about other innovations really I've looked I keep looking around the internet and seeing what people are doing or what companies are up to but I suspect everyone's finding it a little bit tough at the moment I mean we used to do our peak 37 exhibitions a year um, so that went down to about two or three last year before the uh, Chinese virus got us and we've had quite a few requests to attend shows this year in the hope or expectation that they're going to take place but we've declined them all because we just don't feel the time is right yet I'm just lucky we set up a website that works and people can order automatically there's a pile of orders there that will go out today I might work on them after this. It must be cup of tea time. Where's the wife? Sheila, have a cup of tea. Oh no, she's in packing um, occupation occupancy detectors. She's bagging those. I'll keep her busy. I think she's got eighty to do. The end of last year was fun. Uh, we make all our circuit boards on site. We have our own pick and place machine. You may have seen a video of it. And if I'm honest, that machine owes us nothing. It's been run continuously for quite a few years. And I think it's showing the signs of wear. Early December last year, the camera fell. That, the machine has three cameras on it. There's two at the bottom looking up and one at the top looking down on the head. So the, the ones that look up, the, the pick and place machine can pick apart, take it to the camera and analyze how it's holding it, rotate it to the correct orientation, measure that, and then place it with a known accuracy. 
and the top camera uh, it uses to locate the fiducials on the board. So if, I, if this was a circuit board, what you'll see is that there's a little circle here and here that aren't attached to anything. They're called fiducial marks. And the camera will go to that and measure it and measure this because every board when it's placed on the machine is slightly in a slightly different position. So if it's at an angle or whatever, it'll pick up those two fiducials and calculate the offset so it can then adjust the placement of every part based on what the camera measures. And um, when I turned it on early December, uh, there was no video output. So instant crisis. And we did a bit of toing and froing with the, um, the manufacturer. They're a Chinese company and um, concluded it was either the the camera on the head or as I thought the the vision mixer there's a video mixer in it a switch that switches between the cameras they're not digital they're analog on that model and um, so they sent me a, a new top-down camera and uh, they sent me a, a video encoder as well well Suffice to say, it was the it was the camera on the head, the top down one that was faulty, so I had to replace that. Of course, it came with different connectors, and the one that was on there. Uh, but they did include some pins that could be crimped. And fortunately, I had a I have a crimping gun, so I remade the cable, and the camera worked. But it was wildly out of focus, and it was a camera the size no bigger than a coffee bean on a circuit board that once installed is in the most impossible place to get to and somehow I'm supposed to adjust the focus using I don't know a pair of tweezers if you will but they don't fit because the camera's low and you can't get the tweezers on it was it was fun it's a bit like making a model railway we all do things and put them in the most impossible places that we can't get to and if it's one of our boards, then of course that gives you the, the right to curse us when you need to make an adjustment. I get it. Which is why when I'm troubleshooting a board, the first thing I'll say is put it on the bench and let's, let's get it to a known place you can get to. And people will often resist that. And I'll go, well, look, if I'm going to ask you to send the board back to me for a repair, then it's going to go on the bench anyway. So... Let's cut straight to that and we can determine together on the phone our next course of action. And to be honest, that fixes more than half of the issues. I didn't get anything for Christmas. Well, I don't want anything. That's terrible, isn't it? One of the things I plan to do here after is um, over the next few weeks is get my Kato track out, stick it on this. This is actually baseboard from Model Rail Baseboards over in Ireland. Dave Linfield makes a cracking baseboard and this was for my, my new layout. So, do you know what? I'm gonna run a train on it. What I'm gonna do is put up some track and have a bit of fun with occupancy detection and track circuiting signals again and automatic brake control and I thought rather than I did a video where I just put them out and said da -da, here it all is I thought we'll build it up from nothing together on camera so we'll start with the track and we'll just we'll add bits in as we go along till we end up with a, a result and I hope you'll find that interesting listening to my monotone voice For those of you that have never seen me work before, this is what it looks like. I feel I have the deft hand of a elephant, but lucky it's the back, not the front, or I'd be in trouble. Goodrington, oh is it Kingswear and Goodrington? Here's the text. Let's add a bit of colour, see how it looks. 
This is acrylic paint I'm using. I've never used acrylics before. I was told to use it and I've never looked back. I did, on a panel I did last week, you can see a picture of it on the website. Um, there was a, a little bit of artwork and logo a tree going on, but the, the chap that asked them knew what he was doing. He knew how to create the files for me as a scaled vector and they were properly closed so they're easy to use. I think they look rather good. I wish I'd shot a video of that. There's the text. Looking good. Okay, this little corner and a lot of cleaning up. I've got the heater running on the floor. I hope you can't hear it. And again, maybe because I'm looking down on the microphone, I'm booming through as well. I guess we won't know till I get this back on the PC in the house. But the plan is to just blog. I've got to create a, a section on the website for the blog, which if you're watching this, I guess you've found. And it'll be a mixture of videos and pictures. And the idea is just to keep you current on what we're doing. So we've been very busy in 2020 with the lockdown. I think a lot of people turn to their hobbies, those that are fortunate enough to be able to do that. And uh, I feel blessed as well that we can manufacture from, from home. So there were no, no implications for us other than making sure we, we had continuity of parts. And what we did when lockdown was coming was we placed orders for pretty much the whole year's parts so we were good to go well they didn't last a year because sales went up obviously and uh, but we've not we've not had an issue right let's check the logo what not bad for a beginner eh okay now I've got to paint that side from here without getting on the paint Sometimes at the end of this, I look like a six-year-old at play school, absolutely covered in the stuff. And I know Sheila, my wife, will shout at me if it's in the sink when I clean the brushes. Being from Liverpool, she's quite used to letting me know what I'm doing wrong. And I can say, Yes, dear. Getting paint on the circle where the LED sign shines through can be a bit of a mess as well. Don't want that to happen. Pretension is better than cure.
tricky bit. Tiny pieces of track between buttons and LED. There it is. First thing in the morning, I can't see through my eyes and my hands aren't steady, so this is definitely not a job for them. My daughter usually paints the panels, she's very good. But it's good to keep my hand in. Give it the loving touch of Dave. Just to think seven years ago I was working in a busy IT department for a bank. Well, I'm glad I left. To be honest I hated that job. IT used to be brilliant in the 80s, the 90s, even the noughties. But it started being overrun by people with spreadsheets. I think they called themselves project managers and it was just more and more box ticking exercises and it just drove me insane and I'd had enough and Megapoint's controllers came along it was an accident really I did something for a friend's layout and we've never looked back I hope you're enjoying my ramblings Of course the last bits are at the furthest reach. Let's see how much of a dog's dinner I can make here. One little slip up and it'll be a dash for the earbuds. Right, Jove, I think we've got it. Hold it up to the light. There's a bit there. It's a little bit thin here. As if there, that corner. Once it's down on the on the wood like that, it's not transparent and it looks brilliant, but I try and do the best job I can now. A little bit there. I'm just looking at pinholes. You can spend all day looking at it from the top down and you won't see a thing. But I know they're there, I just capture them, fill them, and then they'll look well, they look great now, but they'll. It's just one of those things, if I know it's there, I want it sorted. It's thin down there as well.
that one. That one. Yeah. Some of these things are so small I can't really find them, but I'm just nitpicking. Paint out, may as well use it uh, a little bit there. The surface is already drying on the first bits. Lovely that. You can see it properly when the uh, the paint dries. All right, so we'll come back in a bit and have a look. See you in a bit. So the paint's had a little time to dry, let's take a look at it. Here you go. Pretty smart, hey? I think it looks rather nice. I think somebody's going to be very happy with that this week. I'll just leave it a little longer to uh, harden. <laughs> 